Are you tired of getting ghosted by new leads? Do you feel like they're all getting sticker shock right after you send your pricing over? Like you had all these good vibes on the sales call and then all of a sudden they just don't respond right after you send pricing. If you can relate to this, then I think this video is going to help you so much because today I'm going to be talking all about how I present pricing packages to my new leads in a way that helps them to not only consider different options at different price points, but also shows them the value of what comes included in my packages and just consistently reminds them of why it is worth it to invest working with a stationer. So let's go ahead and look at a few things that I do to help me increase my conversion rates and present pricing strategically. There are two main strategies I want to go over today. The first one is the conversation between package pricing and line item pricing. In the stationary industry and even outside the stationary industry, many business owners have this conversation. Is it better to price out each piece of your package on its own as a separate line item, or is it better to group it all together and have one price for the entire package? And so this is a conversation that is constantly being had among stationers, and I believe firmly on the side of package pricing. I have done both ways, and so I have something to compare to in terms of the experience of sending pricing as a line item report versus sending it as a package price. The reason why I lean toward package pricing is because I think that clients can feel overwhelmed when they see the individual cost of all of these different pieces of your package. They may see your design fee and think, oh, that's way too high. I could design this myself in Canva. Or they may think, oh, my friend has a graphic design degree. She could design my invitations for me. I'm not going to spend $900 hiring this person to design them for me or whatever their mindset may be when they see that line item of your custom design fee they may just not realize all that goes into that and they may think that you are overpriced or that you're ripping them off and so that is one of the main reasons why i package my pricing so that my design fee is rolled into the entire value and cost of the package rather than it being a separate line item the other reason that i like to do package pricing is because i found that when i had my packages broken out by item that people started to just see the cost of each thing and nitpick and ask if they could take things off so for example my current packages are full service. I include envelope addressing, assembly, postage, and mailing for all of my clients. I do not give the option for them to DIY those pieces of the process. And so for me, I don't want them to see that cost broken down because then they might say, oh, well, I can address my own envelopes or I can do the assembly and postage. So let's just cut that off. And so for me, I want it to be part of this package and it's either yes or no, rather than nitpicking all of these different pieces of the package and wondering if they really need those extra upgrades. It is really important for me as a luxury stationer to create an amazing client experience. And so sometimes clients may not realize why it's worth it to let me handle parts of their process. And they might think that they could cut costs by, by doing those things on their own. But what I ultimately want is for their experience to be incredible and for them to have these amazing high quality invitations in the end. And so I know as the professional that it's better for me to handle everything from start to finish. So I'm gonna include that in my package and not break it out as an option to be removed. The other reason why package pricing can benefit you is because it does allow you to roll in some buffer in case you have unexpected costs throughout production. So for example, you might find that you need a rush fee because your print shop is really backed up and even more than you expected. And so you are able to kind of create like a two or $300 buffer in your package pricing to give you room for those types of unexpected things that might pop up. I do want to just acknowledge that I know many people love Love to break things out by line item. They think it's simpler for the client or they think that it's important to actually show the value of the custom design portion. And I don't think that that's necessarily wrong. I have just found in my experience that it is not only easier for me to do package pricing, but it has also increased my conversion rate and allowed me to book more clients with the package pricing format versus the line item format. All right, and the second strategy I want to talk about today is called dynamic pricing. And so the concept of dynamic pricing basically means that I am going to show all of my new leads 
three package options. Rather than giving them just one package that they are either saying yes or no to, I am going to give them three different options at different price points with different upgrades included. And so for me, my first package is always my base package. It is always the most affordable option to work with me. And so you need 100 invitations. Here is the lowest price that you could spend to work with me for 100 invitations. Okay, that is always package one. Then for package two, I add a couple upgrades. So if they said they like the idea of some silk ribbon and wax seals, then maybe I'll do silk ribbon and wax seals in package two added to the base package. Then package three is kind of like the extravagant one, right? That's where I'm adding some upgrades that maybe they didn't even mention in their inquiry form. So like letterpress or envelope liners, I'm just kind of adding a few things into that one to make it really extravagant. That is going to be the highest priced package. I want you to think of this strategy a little bit like Goldilocks and the three bears, okay? So we have our base package, which is the bare bones kind of essentials package. It is going to be the lowest priced option. And then we have the package three, which is our extravagant package. That's the one that's a little bit like above budget. It seems a little over the top, a little unnecessary, all of the upgrades that are in that one. And so many clients are gonna fall perfectly for package two because they will say, okay, this one is just right. This one is in the middle. It's not too expensive. It's not the extravagant over the top one, but it's also not the base one, the cheapest one. It is right in the middle. It feels right. And that psychology of just feeling like they're not going for the cheapest and not going for the most expensive, it makes them feel more confident moving forward. The other benefit to dynamic pricing is that it gives your clients an opportunity to compare options within your services. And so as humans, especially with the, in the world of online shopping, we have this desire to consider options, right? So like we find a shirt that we really like and we wanna go consider, is this for sale on another website for a different price? Or how can I compare this to other options, okay? And so when we create just one package for them, we're giving them just one yes or no option. We're not showing them different options that they can compare and consider. And so that leads them ultimately to going and looking at other stationers or going online because they wanna compare what you've given them to what else exists out there. And so when you create three package options, now you are giving them three different options to compare and all of them lead to you and all of them lead that client to working with you. And so that is just a really effective sales strategy to think about how can you create options for your leads and position those options in a way that make your packages, your base package or your package two seem reasonable and seem more affordable. So I can't wait to hear how you implement this. If you ha are switching over to package pricing or you're implementing a dynamic pricing model, I'd love to hear how it's going for you. If you have questions about how to do this, please comment below and I will be in here responding to you and cheering for you. And I cannot wait to see you next week when we are going to talk about three ways to show your value before booking. So I'm going to talk about specific ways that I help my clients to see why it is worth working with me before they make that decision and put down that retainer payment. So come back next week. This is gonna be the perfect way to finish off this series of inquiry to income.